Online multiplayer is often considered one of the more challenging facets of game development. Syncing up objects across network, making sure all the players are seeing the same thing, and not using too much network traffic can all be a pretty tall order, especially for independent devs who have never really tackled online before. When I first got into it, I had absolutely no idea what I was doing, and honestly, I still don't. But it is possible to make something workable, and I'm getting very close. Here's a little insight into Bunny Hill's online journey. So all those years ago, when I first started making the game, I chose to use Unity. I even considered Godot for a while, but at the time Unity had a lot more support. At the end of the video, I'll share some of my thoughts about Unity after using it for so long and what I plan to do moving forward. But when it came time to add online to Bunny Hill, it just made sense to go with Unity's new package, Netcode for Game Object. If I wanted the online to be cross-platform in the event that I do eventually port to consoles, but I just had to jump in and get going. I later switched to Epic Online Services for the networking backend because there are actually open source plugins that make it super quick and easy to implement. And those plugins actually use the netcode for game objects, behaviors, and stuff like that. Before I get into all the crashes and bugs that I faced, I'd like to give a brief overview of how I understand network programming to function. In my understanding, you want all of the functionality you can to run locally. This way all the game logic is running on your own computer, and it only sends and receives the information from the server that it needs. This should be the bare minimum. With this in mind, objects in your game fall into two categories, senders and receivers. Basically, the idea is that if you have a character that moves, the client with ownership is, for example, outputting a character's position. All of the clients without ownership then just need the code that runs to receive that output and update the character accordingly. So essentially you have a character with full functionality running all of the scripts, and then the character receiving is just a shell version of the original character, maintaining visuals and things like that while they are moved around the world by receiving the input. Most other things don't need to be simulated that accurately and can be run locally. If something does need to be synced or spawned, you have the client call a function on the server, and the server handles the spawning and then the controlling of said object. For example, in Bunny Hill, there are snowball objects that you have to dodge. These objects have their physics simulated on the server, and then only their positions sent to the clients. When a client hits a collider that would spawn one of these objects, they send a request to the server to do it. Anything that the client isn't controlling is handled by the server and doled out from there. In reality, I think it's a ton of trial and error it's really hard to wrap your head around how it works until you've actually done it a bunch. So things are going to break in the initial phases. I eventually got to test with a bunch of my friends, and it went pretty poorly. I thought I had done a better job, but I kept getting random crashes, and we were able to play a couple games, but not consistently at all. The crashes gave me essentially no detail as to why they're happening, and I've been sort of picking away at small things to try to solve them myself. I still really don't know what exactly is causing the crashes, but it seems to be getting better. Hopefully I'll have online to release pretty soon, and I'll release a trailer as well. I'll put out a small video on this channel as well when it goes live, and the game will go on sale as well if you'd like to pick it up. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I'd like to get into the Unity topic. Since they introduced the runtime fee, there's been sort of an explosion among developers, uh, and rightfully so. I think a lot of developers have already said it better than I, but I would like to second that it's not really about the money. Unity and things like that are services that companies provide, and they have to, if they're for profit, they have to find a way to make money. I have no problem as a customer paying a little bit for something that I use every day. I pay for Photoshop, things like that. And as much as I don't like the subscription service model, it's it's a passable model. You can quite easily rationalize it and run the numbers. The Unity per install fee is pretty bogus, uh, just because we don't really know what an install is or how it shakes out with pirated copies or yada, 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 yada. The problems are very apparent. But I think the biggest problem is just that they're trying to do it retroactively on games that already exist under a different terms of service and stuff like that. Um, it's very obvious that the company Unity doesn't have their customer's best interest at heart. 
they're operating from a point of view of how can we squeeze money out of these folks who use our engine. I think most game developers consider themselves to be the value provider in this scenario because Unity brings the tool and the tool comes to light in a bunch of interesting use cases because of the way people use it, the way developers use it. So with all that in mind, I've been kind of playing with Godot for a long time. I've been kind of looking for a reason to switch, but I just never took the jump. It is something that I'm going to have to work on to get good at, just like Unity was, but I think I definitely have a better foundational understanding now than I did when I started Unity of game development as a whole. I'm super excited to get into Godot, and I'll have a cool project coming up that I'll share on this channel, but um, I think open source software in general is the way to go. I use Blender and um, never looked back. I think open source is generally made from a place that has the community's best interest in, at heart because the people making it just do it in their free time or for fun, or they have some sponsorship money, but it's generally not misplaced. The open source community has a huge sort of ethic that prevails it, and I think it really shows through in the final products, whether it's Blender or Godot or whatever. So thanks for listening to my rant. Um, I hope anyone else who's getting who's getting into Unreal or Godot can share their progress as well, because I'd be interested to see it. I think it'd be super cool. Let me know if this sounds like something you'd like to see, but I'd like to make a video about sort of game development philosophy. I think there are a lot of choices that independent developers make that sort of follow a similar train of thought. Putting the player first. A lot of AAA studios have kind of become, in my opinion, washed up or sort of bloated with features that don't really engage the player in the proper way, whether it's impossibly rare items that you can only get out of loot boxes or things of that nature. Some games kind of have this abusive relationship with their players, and I think it'd be interesting to sort of walk through what I think and hear other people's thoughts on the matter. So yeah, uh, go check out my games on Steam, join the Discord if you'd like. Thanks for watching.